It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Welcome to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International with Dr. E.K.D. Quick. With your Bible in hand and your heart open to learn, let's join the teaching in progress. Revelation chapter 9, part 2. We are continuing our series on the book of Revelation, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. We are learning throughout this book of Revelation two main themes. Number one, that the first law of interpretation is that Scripture interprets Scripture. This prevents individuals from using their opinions or traditions or their suppositions to interpret the Word of God. Scripture interprets Scripture. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. We are also learning that the book of Revelation has an abundance of symbolic language. And even though the Bible uses symbolic language throughout the Old and New Testaments, and specifically throughout the book of Revelation, the main theme is to understand that all symbolic language still has a literal meaning, a very practical meaning that applies to us in the present tense. And as we are learning more about the Great Tribulation, we are learning that God does not need man-made devices to judge the world. God does not need nuclear bombs to judge the world. And God is not using man-made devices to judge the world. God himself bears witness to this methodology of using the weather supernatural phenomena as a part of his judgment. The book of Isaiah chapter 13 gives witness on God using the weapons of his indignation. God not using man-made weapons as part of his judgment during the great tribulation, but the weapons of his indignation. Furthermore, scriptures teach in Psalm 18, verse 13, The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Not only will we witness 100-pound hailstones during the Great Tribulation, but these coals of fire may be the very volcanic boulders that spew out from volcanoes and from the fissures that crack the Earth's surface. God is using a supernatural intervention, so much so that we've learned in chapter 6, individuals hiding in the rocks and caves of the mountains look up and understand that the judgment is coming from on high and not from man. God is using a supernatural weather phenomenon to bring down judgment on the world. God is using supernatural hurricanes that cannot be measured, supernatural tornadoes that cannot be measured, earthquakes both in frequency and in intensity, volcanic eruptions that happen in known volcanoes and as fissures begin to crack the earth's surface in the land and the sea, molten lava spews up to change the very geographic structure of the world to remove mountains and islands from their places. Molten lava and gargantuan boulders, fiery boulders, that spew out and pepper the earth from the volcanic activity and the fissures across the globe. Storm surge, winds, global fires, meteor showers, and such like is God using to bring down His wrath on a rejecting world that refuses to receive the love of God through Jesus Christ. 
In addition to the Great Tribulation judgment, we are learning the two main purposes of the Great Tribulation is to bring Israel back to repentance to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, to receive Jesus Christ as their Messiah, and receive salvation and deliverance through Christ. And for the Gentiles that have missed the rapture and were left behind, to also bring them to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Individuals will begin to look during the Great Tribulation to man and to government, global government, to save them in the form of the Antichrist, and eventually this global government, this Antichrist, and the false prophet, through their actions, will cause the world to continue to implode. Verse number 13 through 15. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year. For to slay the third part of men. Here we see in verse 13, the four horns speak of power. The golden altar speaks of God's deity. And by way he instructs his will to be carried out by others during this great tribulation. Verse 14 speaks of specific demons that were bound up during these past eons of time, and now they are loosed for a specific purpose to rage havoc during the Great Tribulation. These are not fallen angels that are roving the earth as we speak. These are great principalities. These are great chief demons that were bound up for a specific season, the Great Tribulation. These are the generals in the Satan's heart of demonic warfare. These are similar to principalities because they're over a certain region bound in the great river Euphrates. This is spoken of in the book of Daniel, chapter 10, where Daniel speaks of the principality of Grisha and the principality of Persia. These are great general demons that guide nations into destruction. The principality of Grecia over the Greek Empire, the principality of Persia over the Persian Empire. We know this also from chapter 16, where demons are going to lead kings unto the battle of Armageddon. Wicked nations and unsaved nations are being led by principalities, demonic spirits, that reign over them and lead and guide them to destructive behavior throughout the earth. Verse 15 speaks of a specific time when these particular demons are loosed. They have a specific time period for raging warfare during the Great Tribulation. Verse 15 also speaks of a specific number of casualties during this time of this particular sixth trumpet. We know that from previous readings in chapter 6, one quarter of the world will be destroyed. We here read in chapter 9, where one third of the remaining individuals will be destroyed. This is not counting one-third of all life in the sea, both man and beast, in chapter 8, nor speaking of two-thirds of the region of Israel and around, according to Zechariah chapter 13. During this time, more than half of the world has been destroyed. And we have yet to have the seventh trumpet, nor the seven bowl judgments be fulfilled. Verse 15 speaks of slaying the third part of men. These demonic angels will be responsible for one-third of the remaining earth being destroyed. Verse number 16 through 19. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, 
and of jacinth, and of brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire, by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Here in verse 16, we have a demonic account of these fallen angels. These particular army of horsemen are not human, for these scriptures speak of demonic attack, demonic warfare, and the weapons that these particular demons are using are not of human origin, nor of human device, nor of human invention. These particular demons in verse 17 resemble the judgment of hell to come, breastplates of fire, and of jaceth, a yellow stone, speaking of the stench of sulfur and the stench of hell, and brimstone, heads of horses as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued the judgment of fire, smoke, and brimstone, speaking once again as a picture of the judgment of hell to come to those that do not repent and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Verse 18 speaks of how a third part of the remaining earth were killed by these particular demonic devices. This has scriptural authority teaching us that not only are these not human soldiers, but demonic soldiers using demonic attacks. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul speaks of the Antichrist using lying wonders as being demonically powered during the Great Tribulation. The book of Exodus speaks of wicked priests attacking Moses with changing their rods into serpents. The book of Revelation teaches that the false prophet will call down fire from heaven to get people to believe on the Antichrist. These are lying wonders. Demons can perpetrate lying wonders. They can manipulate natural phenomena in order to deceive men on the earth. And here these demons are manipulating natural phenomena to hurt men and to kill men on the earth. These attacks coming from these demons are literal. They provide death and they provide torment. Verse 19 speaks again of their torment as per their tails like serpents and their intelligence in terms of their schemes, methodologies, and wiles and demonic strategies as referencing them having heads. These particular demons in the sixth trumpet and in the fifth trumpet were demons that were bound up for thousands of years. There are many reasons why these demons were bound up and not allowed to roam the earth as other demons do today. These demons were bound up, number one, to stop the filth and the spiritual demonic fornication that was taking place in Genesis chapter 6. And this abyss, this bottomless pit, was created that they may be bound up in it. Also, these individuals have such catastrophe and calamity and destruction in their path that they had to be bound up for a season until that particular catastrophe and calamity can be used during the Great Tribulation. These particular demons in the fifth trumpet and the sixth trumpet are also now bringing into the world increased demonic activity as never seen before. These individual demons in the fifth trumpet and sixth trumpet are bringing increased temptations as never seen before. These particular demons in the fifth and sixth trumpet are bringing increased deceptions as never seen before, increased delusions as never seen before, increased demonic possessions as never seen before. The world 
is going to receive such an onslaught of demonic activity during the Great Tribulation, individuals are going to suffer heinous and catastrophic torment. These particular demons, I believe, during the Great Tribulation will demonically possess individuals today that are being cloned. There are great experiments going on underground that are unpublished where man is still experimenting with eugenics, still after thousands of years trying to find the perfect man, still trying to increase the species, no different than the days of Nazi Germany or the days of old through inbreeding. And today there is the technology of trying to clone individuals. Mankind has the power to manipulate DNA, to clone and to create humans, but mankind cannot create a spirit. He can only clone and create and manipulate DNA to create a body. The devil during this time will have an onslaught of these demons possessing cloned individuals in order to try and take over the world. Man is a three-part creature, according to First Thessalonians, spirit, soul, and body. And even though an individual can create a body manipulating DNA, individuals cannot create the spirit within that body. That spirit comes from God himself. And if mankind is manipulating DNA in the form of eugenics, attempting to clone a race of individuals, they may be able to manipulate DNA to create bodies. But the devil is going to come with these millions of fallen demons to possess these particular clones. Verse Number 20 and 21, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Here we see the hardness of hearts of mankind during the Great Tribulation. Here we see that some men are so hard that only the Great Tribulation can bring them to their knees. Some will cry out and be converted during this time. Some will repent during the preaching of the 144,000 Jews and the two witnesses that we shall read about in chapter 11. And some men, unfortunately, according to this particular verse and others, will resist the hand of God and not repent, despite the supernatural phenomenon of the Great Tribulation, killing billions of people with hurricanes, typhoons, global fires, volcanic activity, tidal waves, tsunamis, earthquakes, and such like individuals will refuse to repent despite the onslaught of demonic warfare that torments individuals to the point where they want to die but can't die. Some men will still refuse to repent. This speaks of the choice that we have within ourselves to choose the love of God and repent through faith in Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins or to resist the love of God and die in their sins. Verse 20 speaks of repenting not of the works of their hands. This speaks of individuals not trusting God by faith, but trusting in their own efforts, trusting that they are good enough to earn their way to salvation, trusting and comparing and contrasting themselves with others that they are worthy to receive a heavenly reward. Verse 20 speaks of their worshiping of devils or demons. This is a warning given by Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20 as he quotes Deuteronomy chapter 32. Paul says, 
that the things with the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils or demons and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with demons. Paul is not only speaking of the Corinthian church making sacrifice to devils by the offering up of their food, but this also speaks to individuals that are actually fellowshipping with demons and do not know it. Individuals that have a lifestyle of fornication are being deceived by demons. Individuals that have a lifestyle of murder are being deceived by demons. In their mind, those things are justified. In their mind, those things are okay. And they are being deceived. Jesus Christ taught often through the scriptures, be not deceived. Verse 20, speaking of idols of gold and silver, brass, stone and wood, speaks to materialism, speaks to individuals that want a bigger house just for the sake of wanting a bigger house, individuals that want more cars or a bigger car just for the sake of having a bigger car, individuals that put their heart in jewelry and material things more than the love of God and the faith in Jesus Christ more than the interchange of their heart to be washed and cleansed and to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Verse 21 speaks of their murders. This is not just murder of the shedding of blood physically. These are also individuals that murder individuals with their tongue. They speak behind others' back and they murder the reputation of others without that individual getting a chance to speak for themselves. Murders also speak of the hate in someone's heart. First John 3, verse 15, If an individual hates his brother, he is a murderer. This speaks also to the murder through abortion. The innocent baby in the womb, Proverbs 6, speaks of hands that shed innocent blood. We are living in a generation where over 5,000 babies are being aborted every day. This particular country, because of this endorsement and the endorsement of materialism and the endorsement of homosexuality, is now under the judgment of God. This nation needs a spiritual and national revival. Verse 21 also speaks of sorceries. This is the Greek word pharmakia, where we get our word pharmacy from. This speaks of individuals that are consumed with drugs and alcohol, both the using of it and the selling of it. And we are living in the world that where drugs and alcohol are rampant and illegal drugs throughout the world are becoming decriminalized. There's a great deception and wave throughout the world of drug and alcohol use where individuals are escaping reality, where individuals are trying to seek happiness and joy and excitement through drugs and alcohol. Paul said, be not drunk with wine, don't seek your happiness through wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 21 speaks of their fornication. This is sex outside of marriage. This is the Greek word pornea, where we get our word pornography from. So under the umbrella of pornography, under the umbrella of pornea, under the umbrella of this word fornication, is all type of sexual behavior and activity outside of marriage, including deviant sexual behavior. Verse 21 speaks of their thefts. This is individuals committing both white-collar theft and blue-collar theft. Individuals that may steal from their job what they consider as small items, items that may not be missed, to include individuals that have million-dollar Ponzi schemes. Theft is theft, and stealing is stealing. This particular chapter is the loosing of demonic forces in the fifth trumpet and the sixth trumpet that will destroy one-third of the earth, that will torment individuals for a season, 
as individuals desire to die but cannot die, and individuals have a choice whether to fall on their knees and receive Jesus Christ in this particular tribulation calamity, or to harden their heart and refuse to repent. This is Revelation chapter 9, part 2. I know today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you have strayed away from His love and kindness, I invite you to pray with me this prayer, this prayer of salvation, this prayer of rededication. Won't you bow your head and close your eyes and pray with me this prayer? Oh God, I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me today. Forgive me, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International. LCMI is a Christian non-denominational teaching ministry based solely on the Holy Bible, dedicated to pleasing God, glorifying Jesus Christ, and ensuring that the Bible is the foundation in everything this ministry proclaims and endorses. For more information, log on to our website at lifechangingministries.com. Please join us again next time for more Bible teaching. And remember, we have the victory through Jesus Christ.